Doing more with less is a vital feature of a world that works, where our increasing demands are met, yet do not overwhelm the limits of the Earth. Some of the unusual efficient vehicles with which Aerovironment has been involved serve as visual metaphors for the theme. Most dramatic is the unmanned 100-foot solar-powered Pathfinder, here undergoing low-altitude tests in late 1993. Versions are aimed at eternal flight, or at least flights for months above 65,000 feet, to carry equipment for surveillance, stratospheric monitoring, and telecommunications. The fragile 70-pound Gossamer Albatross was pedaled 23 miles across the English Channel in 1979 to win the largest prize in aviation history. It demonstrates what can be done with low power when new concepts of efficiency are unleashed by challenges not burdened by constraints from narrow rules or the need for commercial production. It is a catalyst for new perspectives that can lead to useful insights and products such as the Pathfinder. And incidentally, it was a tribute to the human spirit. The more primitive and fragile Gossamer Condor was the first really successful human-powered airplane. The final version can be seen at the National Air and Space Museum, where it was installed after this 1977 flight won the first Kramer Prize. About this time, the International Human Powered Vehicle Association was starting to organize competitions for land vehicles without the inhibiting effect of rules. Just go as fast as you can. The streamlined Gold Rush finally exceeded 65 miles per hour and a two-person version averaged over 50 miles an hour on a 40-mile freeway trip. Later competitions started to include some less extreme practical vehicle categories. No match for our wonderful modern cars, but valuable in suggesting that some transportation need not involve large amounts of steel and oil and can be healthy and fun. Pioneering for speed from human power has resulted in some amazing water vehicles. This flying fish hydrofoil lowers drag by flying on a submerged wing. It has been pedaled at 18 miles per hour and can beat the best eight-oared racing shells. In 1987, General Motors teamed with Aerovironment for the rapid development of the GM Sun Racer to be entered in the World Solar Challenge to cross Australia on energy from sunlight. It won, speeding 50% faster than the runner-up and averaging 42 miles per hour on only a kilowatt of power. Batteries to store the intermittent energy from the sun for vehicle use are essential, and obviously for non-race purposes, they can be charged from the utility grid without need for solar cells. This solar car race helped emphasize that battery-powered cars can make sense. Next, the same team combined to create the battery-powered impact demonstrator. To show that cars emitting no pollution can be part of our transportation future, it needed adequate range and snappy acceleration. Here it zooms from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 8 seconds. Now many groups are increasing priorities on battery-powered vehicles, vehicle efficiency in general, and broader transportation issues. Impractical human-powered airplanes, streamlined bikes, and solar-powered cars now seem more valuable as some of the ideas they ignited evolve into socially desirable vehicles aimed at a mass market. Globally, bikes are widely employed for personal mobility, transport of goods, and recreation. For some uses, battery assist, a scaled-down version of electric car technology, makes sense. You can get the help of a virtual peddler, here hidden in the saddlebags, who weighs only a few pounds and never talks back, not to turn your bicycle into a motorcycle, but to let you do for 30 minutes what your normal ability would let you do for only three minutes. You can extend your commuting range with this bionic hybrid that will never run out of gas. You can match performance between individuals or not be bothered by hills on a hot afternoon. A tiny airplane, the AV Pointer, serves for surveillance, in effect a pair of roving eyeglasses. A cutting-edge example of where a miniaturization can lead if the operator is remote from the vehicle. It is convenient to carry, assemble, and launch by hand. Battery-powered, it is silent and rarely noticed. It sends high-resolution video pictures back to the operator. With onboard GPS, it can navigate autonomously, and it is rugged enough to self-land without damage. 
The modern sailplane is superbly efficient. Some can glide as flat as 60 feet forward for every foot of descent. They are powered only by the energy they can extract from the atmosphere. An atmosphere nature stirs up by solar energy. Humans and soaring birds have found nature can be generous in providing replenishable energy. Sailplanes have flown over 1,000 miles and the altitude record is over 50,000 feet. The Solar Challenger was made to serve as a symbol that photovoltaic cells can produce real power and will be part of the world's energy future. In 1981, it flew 163 miles from Paris to England solely on the power of sunbeams and established a basis for the Pathfinder. The message from all these vehicles is that ideas and technology can be harnessed to produce remarkable gains in doing more with less gains that can help us attain a desirable balance between technology and nature. The stakes are high as we speed toward a challenging future. Buckminster Fuller said it clearly, there are no passengers on Spaceship Earth, only crew. We the crew can and must do more with less, much less. <laughs>